Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the earth's geosphere. The geosphere is the solid rocky part of the earth and it's made up of three layers the crust the mantle and the core. Understanding the different layers of the earth helps us learn about what the earth is made of how it is structured and how it behaves. In this video we will explore the earth's layers and how the plates of the earth move let us start with the topmost layer the crust is the outermost layer of the geosphere and it's the thinnest layer it is made up of two types of rocks the oceanic crust and the continental crust the continental crust makes up the land on earth while the oceanic crust forms earth's oceans the continental crust is thicker while the oceanic crust is thinner and denser meaning that the rocks it is made up from are more closely packed together the mantle is the second layer of the earth and it resides beneath the crust this region makes up roughly 84% of the earth it is divided into two main parts the upper mantle and the lower mantle the upper mantle is attached to the layer above it that is the crust The upper mantle along with the crust comprises what is called the lithosphere which is approximately 120 miles or 200 kilometers thick. The lithosphere is broken into sections called tectonic plates. Directly below the lithosphere there is a less fixed and warmer region of the upper mantle called the asthenosphere. Here the temperatures are so high that in places the rock that makes up the asthenosphere melts into liquid only tiny parts of the asthenosphere are liquid but it is soft enough to move pushing around the tectonic plates above rock samples from the upper mantle are occasionally brought to the surface by erupting volcanoes allowing scientists to study them now let us discuss about the tectonic plates The earth's crust and the upper mantle are broken into many plates called tectonic plates that are like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. As you can see in this world map, there are seven major plates that make up 94% of the earth's surface and many smaller plates making up the other 6%. The tectonic plates are in motion and it is thought that they have been in motion since early in earth's history. So, How do these massive slabs of solid rock float despite their tremendous weight? The answer lies in the composition of the rocks. The continental crust is composed of granitic rocks which are made up of relatively lightweight minerals such as quartz and feldspar. By contrast, the oceanic crust is composed of basaltic rocks which are much denser and heavier. The variations in plate thickness a nature's way of partly compensating for the imbalance in the weight and density of the two types of crust because continental rocks are much lighter the crust under the continents is much thicker whereas the crust under the oceans is generally only about 5 kilometers thick like icebergs only the tips of which are visible above water continents have deep roots to support their elevations All these tectonic plates are interconnected. The areas where these plates meet are known as plate boundaries. There are three types of plate boundaries: divergent, convergent, and transform. A divergent plate boundary is a place where two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. This causes the crust to stretch and thin, and magma from the mantle rises to the surface to fill the gap. This process is called seafloor spreading and it is how new oceanic crust is created. Divergent plate boundaries are typically found in the middle of the ocean where the plates are moving apart at a rate of a few centimeters per year. However, they can also be found on land such as in the East African Rift Valley. The Great Rift Valley provides evidence of a split in the African plate dividing it into two smaller tectonic plates. the somalian plate and the nubian plate divergent plate boundaries are important for a number of reasons they are the sites of new crust formation which is essential for the growth of the continents they are also the sites of active volcanism 
which can release gases and nutrients into the atmosphere and ocean. Divergent boundaries also play a role in the formation of ocean currents and climate patterns. A convergent plate boundary is a place where two tectonic plates are moving toward each other. This can happen in two ways. The first one is oceanic-oceanic convergence. When two oceanic plates collide, the denser plate will subduct beneath the less dense plate. This process is called subduction. The subducting plate melts as it sinks into the mantle and the magma rises to the surface and forms volcanoes. This leads to the formation of a chain of volcanic islands called an island dark. The second type is oceanic continental convergence. When an oceanic plate collides with a continental plate, the oceanic plate will subduct beneath the continental plate. This process is similar to oceanic oceanic convergence, but the volcanoes that form are much larger and can create mountain ranges. The Himalayas are an example of a mountain range that was formed by oceanic continental convergence. Convergent plate boundaries are important for a number of reasons. They are the sites of subduction, which is a major process in the formation of mountains and volcanoes. They are also the sites of earthquakes, which can be very destructive. Convergent plate boundaries also play a role in the formation of ocean currents and climate patterns. Next is the transform plate boundary. A transform plate boundary is a place where two tectonic plates are sliding past each other in opposite directions. This causes the crust to be sheared and earthquakes can occur along the boundary. Here you can see some of the most well-known examples of transform plate boundaries. Plate tectonics is a complex and fascinating theory that has helped us to understand the Earth's surface. It is a theory that is still evolving and we are learning more about it all the time. Now, let's go back to the layers of the geosphere. We have already discussed the upper mantle region. Next is the lower mantle. The lower mantle accounts for nearly half of the mass of the Earth. It extends from about 660 kilometers to about 2700 kilometers beneath Earth's surface. The lower mantle is hotter and denser than the upper mantle, and it is a transition zone. Finally, the core is the innermost layer of the geosphere, and it's made up of two parts, the inner core and the outer core. The inner core is solid, and it's made up of mostly iron and nickel. The outer core is liquid, and it's also made up of mostly iron and nickel. The outer liquid core is the third and only liquid layer of the Earth. It is responsible for creating a magnetic field around the planet. The inner core is solid due to the pressure caused by the weight put on it by the Earth's other three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the outer core. The geosphere interacts with the other spheres of the Earth, including the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. For example, the geosphere provides the water that evaporates into the atmosphere, and the atmosphere provides the oxygen that plants need to survive. The geosphere is a complex and dynamic part of the Earth, and it plays an important role in the Earth's systems. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching.